This just in, breaking news, AI is here to take all our jobs. So to see how much we are actually effed, I asked ChatGPT to tell me the differences between the LA-2A and the 1176 compressors. Let's see what happened. All right, I'm pretty sure many of you know already about ChatGPT. If you're not familiar with it, OpenAI ChatGPT is basically a writing software, so to speak, which is not actually AI, it's not actually artificial intelligence, but is more machine learning. So it takes everything that has been written about everything in the world and analyze it, and then you ask him to write something, a blog about the differences, for example, between a camera versus another camera or any other thing or an essay on any subject and in three seconds it writes it for you. So I wanted to see how much he knows about audio and we'll start asking uh, ChatGPT the differences between the 1176 and the LA-2A compressor. Let's see how it goes. So here's ChatGPT page, you can see it on my screen and these are some examples, explain quantum computing in simple terms, which is much more complicated than the differences between the two compressors. Uh, got any creative ideas for a 10 year old's birthday? How do I make an HTTP request in JavaScript? So this thing can actually write code. So let's see how it goes with compressor. Write a blog post about the differences between the 1176 and the, and the LA-2A compressors. Here we go. So you guys are seeing this in real time. He's writing it in real time. The 1176 and the LA-2A are both classic compressor that have been used in countless recordings over the years. They both have their own unique characteristics and can be used to achieve different types of compression. Here's a breakdown of the key differences between these two compressors. Circuitry. The 1176 is a fat field uh, effect transistor compressor, while the LA-2A is a tube compressor. This means that the 1176 uses solid state electronics while the LA-2A uses vacuum tubes. This can have a significant impact on the sound of the compressor with many people finding the LA-2A as a warmer, more organic sound compared to the 1176. Okay, so <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, there's a first error though, right? because you know the LA-2A is, is a tube compressor but it doesn't use the tubes for gain reduction. That would be a barium compressor, right? Uh, the LA-2A has the tubes in the circuit, in the amplifier. It's an actu actually an opto compressor with tubes in it. Okay, uh, attack and release. The 1176 has a very fast attack time, which means it can react quickly to transient and bring them down in level. The LA-2A, on the other hand, has a slower attack time, which can be more suited to handling sustained or gradual increases in level. That's pretty good, though. Uh, the release time on the 1176 is also much faster than the LA-2A, which means it can uh, let go of a signal more quickly. This can be useful for controlling transient, but can also result in pumping, pumping and breathing if not used carefully. Wow. The LA-2A slower release time can help to smooth out a signal and prevent pumping, but, all, but can also result in a slower response to level changes. Jeez, man. Uh, <laughs> a ratio. The 1176 has a range of ratios from 4 to 20, while the 2A has a fixed ratio of approximately 2 to 1. This means that the 1176 is more flexible when it comes to choosing the amount of compression applied while blah, 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 blah. Threshold, uh, the 1176 has a threshold control that allows you to set the level at which the compressor, the compressor starts to work. The LA-2A, on the other hand, does not have a threshold control. Ah, we have a mistake. The 1176 does not have a threshold control, right? The input is our threshold control. Instead, it has a gain control that determines the amount of compression applied. Another wrong answer. The gain control is the makeup gain, while the gain reduction is what uh, determines the amount of compression. Uh, input and output, the 1176 has a separate input and output control, which allow you to set the level of the signal going into the compressor and the level coming out. The LA-2A does not have these controls and instead relies on the gain control to set the level of the compressed signal. Again, wrong, right? The gain is the makeup gain, is the output control and uh, it's not a feedback design, so the gain reduction is 
the control of your compression. In conclusion, the 1176 and LE2A are both classic compressors that have been used on countless recordings. They have different circuitry and control schemes which can result in different types of compression. The 1176 is known for its fast attack and release time, blah, 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 blah. Ultimately, the choice between these two compressors will depend on the specific needs of your project and the sound you're trying to achieve. Huh. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it's good enough, but as we can see, it ain't perfect, right? Uh, we got we got a couple of mistakes on both the 1176, how it works, and the LA-2A. Um, what could we ask? How I make my song loud? All right, there are a few ways you can make your song louder. Use a compressor. A compressor is a device that reduces the dynamic range of a signal by turning down the volume of loud sounds and turning up the volume of quiet sounds. It's gonna help to, uh, to even out the levels in your mix and make it sound louder overall. Use a limiter. A limiter is a type of compressor with high ratio, typically around 20, 20 to 1, that prevents the signal from going above a certain level. This can be useful for preventing clipping and ensuring that your mix doesn't get too loud. Increase the overall volume of the mix. You can use a volume fader or gain control to increase the overall volume of your mix. Just be careful not to push the level too high as this can cause distortion. All right. Use EQ to boost certain frequencies. Boosting certain frequencies in your mix can make it sound louder and more present. For example, boosting the high mid frequency around 2-4K can make vocals and instruments sound more present, while boosting the low end around 100 and 200 can give your mix more punch and weight. Use a multiband compressor. A multiband compressor allows you to compress different frequency ranges independently. This can be useful for taming specific frequency ranges and make your mix sound louder overall. It's, imp it's important to keep in mind that making a mix louder can come to the expense of dynamic range and overall quality. Be sure to use these techniques in moderation and use your ears to judge what sounds best. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty accurate. I mean, all right, let's ask ChatGPT the ultimate question. Is analog better than plugins? <laughs> oh. There is no definitive answer to whether analog gear is better than plugins. Both have their own unique characteristics. This sounds like every blog post out there and can be used to achieve different types of sounds. Here are a few factors to consider when deciding whether to use analog gear or plugins. Sound quality. Some people argue that analog gear has a warmer or more natural sound compared to digital plugins. This can be due to the fact that analog gear often has a certain amount of inherent noise and distortion which can add character to the sound. However, the quality of the digital plugins has improved significantly in recent years and many high quality plugins are now available that can produce sounds that are indistinguishable from their analog counterpart. That's how plugin companies wrote it. Will AI replace humans? There is an ongoing debate about whether or not artificial intelligence will replace human in certain industries or tasks. Some people believe that AI has the potential to significantly change the way we work and live, while others believe it will always be limited by the fact that it is not human. AI is still limited by its inability to fully understand or replicate human emotions and judgment. This means that it might not be suitable for tasks that require empathy, creativity, or decision-making in complex or uncertain situations. I would say art falls into that. Before we continue, guys, if you really want to learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button down here, become a Mix Plus TV member, access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses, start to finish, mastering courses on many different genres and a lot more. And keep an eye out for the next live mixing class. Those are one-offs and tickets are limited. And if the videos are helping you, please consider using the super thanks and support the channel. Let's keep going. What's the best analog compressor? Oh, it's thinking. I broke the AI. See, not even, the, not even the AI can make up its mind about what is the best analog compressor. All right, let's try another one. What's the best microphone. The best microphone for a specific application will depend on several factors, include the type of recording you're doing, blah, 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 blah. Here are some general guidelines to help you choose the right microphone for your needs. Vocals. A large diaphragm condenser microphone is a good choice. These microphones are sensitive and able to capture a full range of a human voice. Some popular options include the Neumann U87, the Shure SM7B, and the Rode NT1. This is literally every <laughs> blog post, generic blog post about microphones. Again, as you can see, this is, uh, it's not actually AI, it's 
machine learning. So it basically analyzes all the blogs written on a given subject and probably all the videos or something like that <laughs> ever published. And I kind of condense it. But I suppose for those people who write blogs or something, this can be a useful tool to start and go from there. You didn't get the differences between the 1176 and the LA2A that well, but <laughs> probably because half, if not more, of the blogs post about uh, those two compressors are wrong. It's all a matter of who you can trust with the information. Someone who does this for a living and have uh, real life experience with all the things versus people that only write about it and probably regurgitate a lot of information from people who actually know. Anyway, uh, I want to know, guys, what you want me to ask to chat GPT. <laughs> let's, let's do this. And uh, this is the video. What do you think about AI replacing musicians? I did a live stream not long ago. Uh, about this subject. We started talking about live about this and um, some people believe that AI will never replace musicians. Some people believe that AI will replace a certain type of musicians and, and some people think AI will replace all of them. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is what I said in that live stream. I'll summarize it here. I think if the day where we're gonna sit here and say, oh, damn guys, what are we gonna do? You know, AI is making all the music out there and we, we need to find another job. Most likely we will have other way more impactful fields in which humans have been replaced by either robots or machine learning or uh, AI, like military, medical, transportation, food industry. These are gigantic markets that will give much more monetary rewards than music and other smaller markets. Although music is a big market, still, compared to the others, I think if music will be threatened by AI, we're gonna have much bigger problems <laughs> before that happens. Anyway, I wanna know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you like the video, please don't forget to leave a like, support by using the super thanks, subscribe if you haven't already, watch out for the AI coming for you, stay safe. See you next time.